This is Paul Anthony with Jazz Alive. Do you remember the coastal controversy in jazz? Sure you do. You know, east is east and west is west and never the twain shall meet. The east was hot and the west was cool. The east was Charlie Parker and the west was Lester Young. New York City was not Los Angeles. A lot was written about the particular merits of East and West back in the 50s. Magazine writers and editors were hired or fired depending on their coastal persuasions. And more than one musician became a star because of his regional affiliation. Looking back at that period from a distance of a quarter of a century, it all seems pretty pointless today. I mean, when you sift it all out, there was a lot of good music, lasting music, that came out of both New York and Los Angeles in the 50s. On this program, we'll hear from some typical West Coast jazzmen. That is, they live in Los Angeles, but few of them are native Californians. Most of them began their careers in New York or on the road before settling in L.A. And typical of most cool West Coasters, these men admire most the hot, energetic music of Charlie Parker. Alto saxophonist Frank Morgan has been in Los Angeles since the late 40s. He openly admits to being a bird disciple, and you can sure hear it in his playing. This is Jack Dugana's workshop in Santa Monica, California. It's the home of regular Sunday afternoon recitals and jam sessions. And two of the regulars are alto saxophonist Frank Morgan and pianist George Cables. Morgan was one of several Los Angeles-based saxophonists who were hypnotized by the brilliance of Charlie Parker in the late 40s. Though not a native Angelino, he's made the City of Angels his home since 1940. Some of you may remember a recording Morgan did with the Machito rhythm section for the Los Angeles-based GNP Crescendo label in the 50s. Now that was some hot stuff. I'd sure like to get my hands on it today, I'll tell you. It's rare, though. Morgan's been out of the limelight for many years, but as you'll hear, that old fire is still burning hot. For this performance, he's joined by a gentleman everyone is talking about, not only in Los Angeles, but wherever contemporary jazz is happening. Pianist George Cables, whose associations are too numerous and luminous to mention here. Suffice it to say, he is a frequent choice of another L.A. personage, tenor saxophonist Dexter Gordon. Let's hear them play Frank Morgan and George Cables on stage at Jack Duganis Workshop in Santa Monica. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Frank Morgan and George Cables paying their respects and demonstrating a more than passing acquaintance with the music of Charlie Parker. Birds scrapple from the apple. They'll be back shortly, but first let's join Frank backstage where he's talking with Will Thornbury. You came out here in 1947, if I remember, and there were a lot of really fine players in town. Oh, yes. I think about all the guys around who seemingly found endless number of places to play. I, I remember the proliferation of clubs that didn't advertise, uh, were not uh, widely known, and yet there was a ton of them along Central Avenue. There were all sorts of after-hours places. There was all sorts of activity. What was it like for a young alto player to uh, drop into this pool of uh, activity and talent? It was, um, it was like a dream. It was... It was like I walked into a fairyland or something. At that time, um, Dexter Gordon, Hampton Hawes, Teddy Edwards, Wardell Gray, they worked different clubs every night. And it was a session at these clubs. The downbeat one night, uh, um, the last word, you know, uh, uh, I mean, this was during the regular, regular uh, nine to two hours. Um, I remember the California Club. The California yeah. Club. Well, yeah, that was a little later. Uh, yeah, in was. fact, I, I, I got in on the California Club. Uh, uh, in fact, I, I remember working the California Club on Monday nights uh, and standing in between Dexter and Wardell. And one night in particular, um, Gene Ammons came in and I'm standing up there with, you know, Gene Ammons, Dexter Gordon, and Wardell Gray, and I'm just awestruck, you know. And uh, and I look up, and uh, here's another tenor player getting up on the bandstand with his back, you know. He kind of had his back to me, and I finally he turns around, and it's James Moody. Uh, at that point, I decided to just sit down, and, you know, <laughs> and let them have it, you know, <laughs> you know. And uh, Sonny Chris and I, uh, Sonny was also playing. Uh, too and uh sonny had the same idea that i had you know we just let you know let the tenor players you know <laughs> boot it out you know frank morgan speaking with will thornbury well even in jazz discretion is sometimes the better part of valor i wouldn't have thought anyone could scare sonny chris or frank morgan for that matter frank's on his way back to the stage to rejoin george cables so we'll catch up with them right after this short pause for station identification I'm Paul Anthony, and this is Jazz Alive on NPR, National Public Radio. From American University, 88.5 FM, WAMU, Washington. This is Paul Anthony with more Jazz Alive from Jack Duganis Workshop in Santa Monica, California. Let's go back to the stage to hear more from alto saxophonist Frank Morgan and pianist George Cables. Thank you. 
All the things you are. I would like to have a nickel for every time that song's been done. Jerome Kern's Evergreen, performed by alto saxophonist Frank Morgan, accompanied by pianist George Cables, two of LA's finest. 